My name is Phil Nickel. I've been with Pleasureway 27 years and I will give you a brief orientation and walkthrough of the operational systems of your 2014 pursuit. Welcome to the 2014 Pleasureway Pursuit built on the Ford E350 cutaway chassis. This is a dual wheel chassis featuring 12,500 pounds of GBW. This is the 6.8 liter V10 engine with the tow haul transmission. All components underneath the hood are Ford factory components. Please refer to your Ford owner's manual. This is a Ford factory battery underneath the hood. This is your engine starting battery, which is separated from the auxiliary battery by a separator that is down on the driver wheel well. This battery separator allows the alternator to charge both the engine starting battery and the auxiliary batteries when you're driving and going down the road. This is a smart solenoid. The smart solenoid will first charge the engine starting battery and then supply power to the auxiliary batteries for their charging purposes. Important labeling for your Ford Pursuit is located on the driver pillar. These are your factory tire settings as well as the Pleasureway tire settings. These are also indicating size of rim and size of tire that is applicable to this vehicle. Directly behind your driver door is your water heater. Your water heater is behind the vent that is located just as the body flares out. This vent door makes sure that nothing is blocking the vents for optimum use of your water heater. Inside this vent door, you will find your pressure release valve for your water heater. You can pull this to see if your water heater is full. You will find your reset buttons for your water heater and you will find your anode rod. This anode rod is there to protect your water heater. It takes a one and one sixteenth inch socket to open it and drain your water heater. The gas water heater functions on propane. You have to ensure your propane tank is in the open position. And the gas water heater also functions on the 12 volt system for the ignition of the water heater and also for temperature regulating. Next to your water heater, down low on the skirting of the vehicle, you'll find your large component and generator door. The thumb latches rotate 90 degrees, lift the door. This will give you access to your component compartment and your generator. In your component compartment, you will find your off-on switch for your LP gas. This is the 12 volt switch. Your 12 volt disconnect will have to be in the on position to turn on your LP gas. You will also find your park water connection. If you connect the garden hose to your park water connection, the pressure from the park will run all of the water system in your vehicle. You will also find a park cable connection if the park is equipped with cable, simply hooking to the park cable system and you can run the cable through your television system. Your 120 volt power cord connection is also housed in this area. And this supplies AC power to the interior of your coach. Simply take your marine pole yellow power cord, which is found in the rear storage section of your vehicle, push it in, lock it in position, turn the lock nut to secure the power cord in to your vehicle. Always plug into your coach first and then into the pole at your campsite. Also housed in your component compartment are your black and gray water dump valves and your sewer hose connection. Remove the sewer hose from the rear component compartment on the driver's side. Simply remove the cap and attach your sewer hose. This will allow you to dump your black and gray water holding tanks Pull your black water holding tank first, allowing it to dump and empty. Close the black water holding tank, then pull your gray water holding tank to allow the gray water to flush the black water through your sewer hose. At most dump sites, you will also find that they have a flushing hose so that you can rinse out your sewer hose. The low point drain is located just above the sewer dump. This will drain off your entire water system. Your 2014 Pursuit is equipped with a 4 kilowatt Onan generator. This is operating off of your existing fuel tank on the vehicle. Once the vehicle reaches a quarter tank, the generator will automatically shut off. The large storage door allows you access into your generator and into the working components of your generator to check your oil, start from outside, and please refer to your Onan generator manual for any maintenance and service that you may need to do on your generator. Midway along the driver's side on your vehicle, you will notice two large vents. These are your fridge vents. Please keep these vents free from any debris or anything that will block these vents. 
You will notice that these fridge vents will put out hot air out of the top when the fridge is operating and draw cool air in the bottom. The lower access panel will give you access into the back operating components of your refrigerator as well as access into the shower hose and shower tap area. At the rear driver's side of your Pursuit, you will notice your fuel fill door. This is behind a locking cabinet door. 751 key will open this door, which will give you access to your fuel cap so that you can fill your vehicle with fuel. On the driver rear lower corner, you will notice you have a second component compartment. Housed in this component compartment are your auxiliary shower, your propane fill, and your sewer hose, which we used earlier, hooking it onto the sewer dump area. The 751 key will also open up your utility shower. Simply pull your hose out to use your auxiliary shower. You have hot and cold running water at this point. Your auxiliary shower can be used for numerous applications. In the rear component compartment, you will also find your LP tank fill. Simply remove the yellow cap, hook on with the LP fill tube, open up the breather to fill your LP tank. This tank should not be filled more than 80%. To check the level on your LP gas, you can check it on the monitor panel located at the kitchen end panel. Your rear component compartment features flip-up handle latches. These are slam latches and a catch to support your door. To close your component compartment, simply slam the door securely and it is locked into position. Your vehicle is equipped with a 5,000 pound hitch. This is a two inch tube hitch and is rated for 5,000 pounds, 500 pounds of tongue weight and a seven pole Polak wire connector. The rear of your coach features your spare tire mounted on the rear. This is also enclosed in a continental tire cover. To remove the continental tire cover, you will need your 602 key. Simply slide the key into the lock turn it 90 degrees to release the lock, unhook the lock. Once you have the retaining clip released, release the ring, remove the cover, then open up your ring and slide it off your spare tire. To remove the spare tire from the rear of your vehicle, you will need the wheel lug nut wrench as well as the extension socket found in the passenger rear storage compartment. You will find the socket located as well with your hubcap removal tool in the gray plastic bag in this compartment. Remove your extension socket, remove your jack tool and lug nut wrench from the Velcro that holds them in place at the top of the compartment. Once you have retrieved your extension socket, place it on the lug nuts that are actually holding the spare wheel to the rear of the vehicle. You will find three nuts. Using your lug nut wrench, place that on the end of the socket, turn and release your spare tire. Once you have changed your spare tire, place it back on the vehicle using your extension socket and your lug nut wrench, tighten your flat tire to the rear of your vehicle and replace your Continental kit. The passenger rear storage compartment on your Pleasureway Pursuit features locking slam latches. You will need the R001 key to unlock your slam latches. Turn it 90 degrees and you have your slam latches unlocked. Open the door, tuck it into the retaining clip at the top. In this storage compartment, you will find your auxiliary batteries, your lower fuse panel, your battery disconnect switch, your jack and jack tools, as well as your hubcap removal tool and your power cord. Your battery disconnect and your resettable 12 volt breakers are behind the upper cabinet door in the rear of your passenger side storage compartment. To remove this door, just pull firmly and the door will be removed. Your breakers are marked on the back side of the door. The top 30 amp power sofa reset button is at the copper post end. Your battery disconnect to disconnect your auxiliary battery, you will push the red button that will trip your auxiliary battery to reset it. Simply move the arm back underneath the center bar. You also have a disconnect for your generator. If your generator is not powering your coach or not starting, check this breaker 
Again, this is a resettable breaker. To trip, push the red button and reset by swinging the arm into the center bar. And the lower one is the 80 amp charge line breaker coming from your alternator. If your batteries fail to charge from your alternator, check the 80 amp manual reset breaker. If this arm is tripped or swung out, it will not be charging from your alternator. To reset, swing the arm back into the center bar. Below your battery disconnect is your auxiliary batteries. This compartment houses two wet cells. These are deep cycle batteries. This is the SRM 24 series interstate battery. You will have to check your fuel levels on a regular basis. These two auxiliary batteries supply the 12 volt DC power when you are dry camping in the campgrounds. At the front of the passenger rear storage compartment, you'll find your lower fuse panel and breaker panel. The lower fuse panel is part of the spider controls or the multiplex wiring system. You will notice beside each one of the fuses is the components that they control, as well as a 60 amp fuse, which is for your inverter for your TVs. In the rear passenger storage compartment, you will also find your jack for the vehicle for changing your tires, your jack tool, and the jack crank tool. Please refer to your Ford owner's manual for proper jacking points and the operation of this tool. You will also find your hubcap removal tool. This is in the gray pouch that you had for your extension socket for removing your spare tire at the back. This hubcap removal tool is used to lock your hubcaps into place so that they cannot be stolen. Your rear storage compartment may not be completely free from moisture. Please be aware of this when you're storing things in this compartment. You may want to put them in weather tight bags. Using your hubcap removal tool, go to the longer lug nuts on your center cap. Simply give them a twist to remove your center lug nut and your outer ring. Loosen them right off. You will find two locking lug nuts. And slide your hubcap off. The hubcap retainer nuts will have to be removed before you can remove your lug nut using the same tool as you use to remove your hubcap. To test and fill your tires, you will need a two-ended tire gauge and fill. To test your rear tires, your outer dual, the valve stem sticks into the center. Simply using the top edge of your dual tester, you pull back and this will allow you to test your tire. To test the inner dual, the valve stem sticks out, slide your tire gauge in and on to the valve stem. The hubcap does not have to be removed to test and fill your rear tires. Moving from the rear storage compartment on the passenger side, we move to the electrical plug. This is the 120 volt AC electrical plug. This electrical plug is powered when you're running on your generator or plugged into shore power at your park. This plug is also controlled by the GFI in your kitchen. Next to your exterior plug, you have your furnace vent. Ensure that this vent is not blocked in any circumstances as this is the fresh air draw and the output for your furnace. Next to the side entrance door is our small passenger side storage compartment. In this storage compartment you will also find the roof cover panel that can be removed to give you access to some of the plumbing going up into the kitchen area. This is controlled by a slam latch which takes the R001 key. On the forward edge of your passenger side, you will find your fill for your potable water. Use your 751 key to access this fill. This is a locking compartment. Remove your cap. Using a garden hose, fill your potable water tank or your onboard freshwater holding tank. Once this tank is full, you will notice that you will have a slight trickle of water coming out your vent line. Shut your water off once it is full. Underneath the vehicle, if you notice water running out when you're filling this tank, ensure that the drain on your fresh water tank is in the closed position. Directly below your passenger side entrance door step is your low point drain for your water tank. Your Pursuit is equipped with a carefree power awning. To operate your power awning, simply turn on this power switch and then extend your carefree power awning. 
This is an armless or a legless awning and it will go out and remain out. It also has a motion sensor which will allow the awning to retract in windy situations. Your awning is equipped with a motion sensor. In certain amount of windy conditions your awning will automatically retract to protect the awning. Starting on the interior of the Pursuit, this Pursuit is equipped with a power sofa. You also have the option of the U-shaped lounge. To lay your power sofa flat, simply on the kitchen cabinet face frame you have three switches. You will slide your power sofa forward with the first switch. Slide your power sofa forward with the second switch. Then lay your power sofa flat with the third switch. You will then tuck the seat belts in below the power sofa. And using the armrests from the power sofa, you will reverse and drop them into position along the side to fill in the center portion of your power sofa. To reverse your power sofa and put it back up into the seating position, remove the armrests from the end of the power sofa, place them back on the ledge on the side. Using the reverse order, first allow your power sofa to go up. If you choose not to slide your power sofa back, you will also find a large storage area back behind your power sofa. And if you choose to store things behind the power sofa, ensure that you are not placing things directly on the power sofa motors or on the wiring connections. Also in this position, this is the right time to also tuck your seat belts back underneath your seat. Once again, in reverse order, use your switches going from back to front and slide your power sofa back pulling your seat belt out to where they can be used and slide your sofa back with the final motor. Setting up your rear dinette table, we have removed the table pole and the table from the front closet area. You will notice there are three corners to the table pole. Simply drop your table in the table base, push down, give it a slight turn, locking it into position. Then using the collar, rotating counterclockwise, lock the locking collar down to the floor to give your table the most stability possible. Then place your table on top of the table leg, pressing down to lock it into position. You will also notice you have a front table base. This is for when your driver and passenger chairs are swiveled into the rear position. You can use either table. You will find a round table in your closet or the rectangular table from the rear in this location. Your Pursuit may be equipped either with the power sofa or the U-shaped lounge. To set up the U-shaped lounge, remove the backrests, store the corner pieces. To insert your bedboards, lift the cushion, slide the bedboard over top of the rail, set your bedboard down on the other maple rail, and slide towards the back of the vehicle. Repeat with the second bedboard. Both bedboards must be installed in the front forward position. The bedboards are located in the front closed closet locked into position. For the bed setup, you will use your two rounded side cushions. and your center backrest cushion. Once the cushions are in place, you can tuck and fold your seat belts back out of your way. To open your skylight, simply release your lock by pushing the knob at the end of the barrel and turn the lock on each side. Push your skylight out and you can raise it right to the top and lock the handle into the retaining clips. You can also lock your skylight in a partially open position. Just simply move the handle into the C-clips and lock them into place. This way, in a windy situation, it will not lift your skylight. 
you can also lock your skylight in a slightly open position just by simply using the second lock position. For night, you can slide your nightshade across your skylight and lock it into the full shut position. With it locked into the full shut position, if you slide it back using the handle, be careful not to release the screen clip. When you slide it back, you can also have a screen. This is what you would use if you had your skylight in an open position. To release your screen, slide it into the full night position, pull down on the plastic clip, and release your nightshade. Your Pursuit comes with several different TV and theater options, anywhere from a 22 inch rear mount TV to a 32 inch front mount TV. The entertainment centers are quite similar in how they operate. Your rear mount TVs are on a swing arm. To swing your TV into a better viewing position, simply pull down on the cord and swing and release the TV from the wall. It is recommended that you lock your TV back into the full lock position for transportation. Your Pursuit is equipped with a Wi-Fi Blu-ray player. In the cabinet just above the Blu-ray player, you will find your inverter, your Blu-ray player, and your television operate off the one 10 volt system, either by the inverter or by the wall plug. The inverter operates from your 12 volt battery. There is an off on switch on the fan end of your inverter to turn on. This will give you one 10 volt power to your Blu-ray player and to your television. If you're plugged into shore power or operating off the generator, simply turn off your inverter and plug into the one 10 volt plug situated just above your inverter. If your inverter is not putting out power to your television and Blu-ray player, Check the GFI located on the plug end. There is a test button and a reset button at this point. When using your TV antenna, simply turn on your antenna booster, which is situated on the white wall plate. Your jack antenna is located in the rear upper center cabinet. With the booster switch in the on position, you will notice the lights for your jack antenna light up as well. If the lights are not on on your jack antenna, check the off on switch on the side of the jack antenna mount. The jack antenna is semi-directional, so by simply releasing the lock on the jack antenna, you can rotate your jack antenna to give you better reception. It also has an attenuator, and with this you can actually turn up or turn down your boost strength. When operating off of part cable, simply turn off your booster. This will allow part cable to come into your coach. In the rear upper style, next to the rear upper entertainment center door where you find your inverter, you will also find a fuse panel for the interior of your coach. To open this cabinet, release the bottom clip first and rotate the top clip out. You will find your fuse controls on the back side of this end style and all the fuses for your spider control system are located in this area. These are all mini blade fuses. You will notice that the majority of the fuses are 10 amp fuses with the exception of one 3 amp fuse which is for your COLP detector. The rear control panel for your lighting system and components is located just above your television. You will find that it is a lighted panel you have your top one is for your ceiling lights that is in the rear of your coach. The second one is for the under cabinet lights which are in the rear of your coach. You have a day night shade option as well. The day shades are controlled by individual switches. The night shades are controlled by one master switch. For your day shades, if you hit the down button, your shade will start to come down. Hit the down button once again to stop it at the desired height. For your nightshades, simply push the down button and all three nightshades will come down at the same time. To stop your nightshades from coming down, simply hit the down button once again and you can stop them at the desired height. On your rear panel, you also have a control for your water heater. Ensure that your water heater is full of water before you are turning your water heater on and also be sure that your propane switch is in the on position. Just below the water heater switch, you do have your generator start stop switch. You can start your generator at this point and turn your generator off at this point. You also have the generator hour meter that will tell you how long you've been operating your generator. 
Your vehicle is equipped with a 16,000 BTU Atwood furnace. Your thermostat is a manual set furnace. To turn your furnace on, simply move your off on switch located at the top of the thermostat to the left to turn your thermostat on. You will notice that it is hard pushed and it will click to move to the on position. Set your furnace to the desired temperature by using the bottom slide switch. When the furnace is not in use, ensure that you turn your thermostat right down on the bottom slide switch and once again lock your furnace in the off position on the top switch. If your furnace fails to ignite, you can open your furnace vent by simply unlocking it, lifting the furnace cover, open the lower drawer and remove the vent cover. You will notice that there is a reset and an off on switch for your furnace underneath this cover. Your vehicle is equipped with a six cubic foot domatic refrigerator. This is a two door refrigerator that has a fridge portion and a freezer portion. Simply push the handle down to release the door. Always ensure that the doors are locked into the full closed position for transportation. This is a two-way fridge. This fridge is either 110 or propane gas. Simply turn your fridge on and you can either go to auto or you can select the gas mode. Please follow your fridge instructions for the desired fuel based on your camping needs. Your vehicle is equipped with a convection microwave. This is a 110 appliance only. It will not operate off of the 12 volt system. You can operate the convection microwave off of your generator or off of your shore power. Please follow operating instructions found in the manual for your convection microwave. Your vehicle is equipped with a 13,500 BTU rooftop air conditioner made by Dometic. On your controls, you can choose whether to run your air conditioner at full air conditioning or you can also switch to fan mode. You can also select your desired temperature. Your air conditioner also has a filter system. Ensure that these filters are clean at all times. This will optimize the use of your air conditioner. Your vehicle is also equipped with the Fantastic fan. This is an exhaust fan to operate this fan. Ensure that the lid is in the full upright position. Choose one, two, or three for your fan speed. The Fantastic Fan also has a temperature selector. This is the desired temperature inside your vehicle, which will engage your Fantastic Fan. This fan is an exhaust fan. It is advised to use your exhaust fan when you are cooking or when you're showering in the vehicle to exhaust the humidity and any fumes coming from your cooktop. Your vehicle is equipped with a two burner SMEV stove made by Dometic. This is a glass cooktop. Ensure your burners are always cooled off before lowering this cooktop. Lift the lid of your cooktop to access your burners. To ignite your burners, ensure that your propane switch is in the on position. Simply select the light position. Hold the burner in the light position and strike your striker. You may have to strike your striker more than once to ignite your burner. Once your burner is lit, turn your burner knob to the desired temperature or height of flame. Your vehicle is equipped with a stainless steel sink located just below the Corian sink cover. This Corian sink cover can also be used as a cutting board. It is advised to flip the Corian sink cover over if you are going to use it as a cutting board. That way the top of your Corian sink cover remains smooth and clean just like the rest of your countertop. Your stainless steel sink has a sink drain and basket this sink drains into your gray water system and into your gray water tank. It is equipped with a single lever, hot and cold running water tap. Simply lift the lever to run your tap and move it to the desired temperature. Just above your three kitchen drawers, you will notice that you have a 110 volt plug. This is a GFI plug. This GFI plug controls your kitchen plugs, your outside plug, your bathroom plug, and your refrigerator plug. All drawers in the vehicle are equipped with a ball bearing drawer slide system. Simply slide the drawer out. If you would like to remove the drawer fully, there is a release clip on each side of the drawer. Simply push the one on the left hand side down, lift the one on the right side and slide your drawer completely out. To re-engage your drawer, simply line up your slides and slide it back in and the drawer is once again locked into position. To obtain access to your converter, 
and also your transfer switch. Remove the lower large drawer and this will give you access to the lower kitchen area where these two components are housed. Your converter also carries two 30 amp fuses. These 30 amp fuses are there just in case your auxiliary batteries have been hooked up with reverse polarity. To reinsert your drawer, simply line up your drawer glides and press the drawer back into the roller catches. Below your kitchen sink door, you will find your 110 volt breaker panel. Simply push the front of the door to pop it and release it. You will notice you have 110 household breakers labeled for each appliance that they control. Your vehicle is equipped with a series tank monitor system. Simply turn the tank system monitor on. It will take a minute to read and you can scroll through your tanks by using the up and down arrow. This system will read your fresh, your gray and your black tank as well as your battery system and your LP tank. Please refer to your manual for your series tank monitor system for proper operations and to turn your alarms off and on. On the kitchen end gable you will see your master switch panel for the multiplex wiring that runs through your system. The master switch panel features a panel light that can be turned on to illuminate all of the potential switches on the panel. You can turn off and on your entrance light, off and on your porch light, your ceiling lights, your under cabinet lights, your counter lights. On the switch panel as well, there is a light master switch which allows you to turn off and on all lights at the same time. On this switch as well, you have your generator start stop switch, your water pump switch, and your master shade switch. If there is a problem, please check your fuse panels, either above your entertainment center or down in the outside storage compartment. Your upper cabinet doors are on bloom cabinet hinges as well as a bloom lid stay. You can adjust the pressure with an Allen key. Simply turn the center bolt to adjust the pressure for the lid stay that holds your cabinet doors in the upright position. You will notice your vehicle is also equipped with a wine rack. It is suggested that you do not leave wine bottles in the wine rack while you are traveling. Your vehicle is equipped with an LP and CO2 detector. You do have a test and reset button on your LP CO2 detector. Please follow the operating instructions found in the manual for the LP and CO2 detector. Your vehicle is also equipped with a smoke detector located on the highest point in the ceiling. This smoke detector is powered by a 9 volt battery. The smoke detector will give you warning signal. It will beep to indicate if the battery is low. Please follow the instructions for your smoke detector. To access your 9 volt battery and replace it, just simply open your 9 volt battery by pulling it away from the ceiling. This battery should be replaced annually. Your vehicle is equipped with a fire extinguisher for your safety. It is just inside the main entrance door and close to your kitchen end panel so it is accessible from inside and outside your vehicle. Your vehicle is equipped with several emergency escapes. One of the emergency escapes is by either rear window. To release your rear window for emergency escape, push the red handle in towards the inside of the vehicle, snap it out of position and slide your window open. You can lock this window in an open position but for emergency, you will want to push it wide open so that you have easy access to leave your coach. For emergency escape, you will have to pull your red pull tab to remove the screen from the window. Your bathroom features a 34 inch rounded shower. This is one of the largest showers in a motorhome of this size. To operate your shower, simply open the travel clip. Ensure that this clip is engaged when you are in transportation and simply bring the doors apart. The doors are magnetic and do take some pressure to open. You will notice it is a Corian backsplash that is also sealed with silicone. Clean this as you would a regular shower. Your shower features a single handle selection for hot and cold running water. Ensure that your water pump is on or you are connected to a city water supply. Your vehicle is equipped with a China Bowl toilet this is just like your household toilet and you can clean it the same way you would your household toilet. This is a foot flush toilet. 
You will notice when you push your foot flush halfway down, you will get water into your bowl. And to fully flush your toilet, press the foot pedal right to the ground. Your bathroom is equipped with ample cabinet space along the outside and sink wall. To ventilate your bathroom, especially in a shower situation, you want to open your window and run your fantastic exhaust fan. You will notice your bathroom vanity is equipped with two switches. The first is for the ceiling lights. The second is for the water pump. This way you can turn on your water pump while you are in the washroom. Your vanity is also equipped with a Corian countertop, a sink that is placed below the Corian, a single handle waterfall fountain, and Corian backsplash. In the lower passenger side front cabinet, you will find your water pump. Your water pump is also located behind the magazine rack in previous model years. Your water pump is readily accessible. You will notice the inline filter. This is on the water tank side of the water pump. This is drawing from your water tank. Ensure that your filter is clean at all times. Simply unscrew the filter to remove it and clean your filter. The switches for your water pump are located on the kitchen end panel and on the bathroom vanity. On the driver's side, in the lower door just behind the driver's seat, you'll find your water heater. Your water heater here is currently set for the winter mode, so it is bypassing the water heater. You will notice you have three bypass valves. When the handle is in line with the water line, the valve is open. When the handle is closed, the valve will make a T with the water line. For summer mode, open your top valve and your bottom valve, putting the handles in line with the water line, and close the bypass valve in between the two, making a T with the water line. These are 90 degree valves, they will only turn 90 degrees. If you leave the center valve open, you will have a mixture of hot and cold running water coming out of your hot water heater, and your water will most likely end up hand wash warm. Please ensure your water heater is full of water before turning on your water heater switch. You can check this by using the pressure release valve on the outside of your water heater. Your 2014 Pursuit can come equipped with a forward bunk or forward cabinets. To set up the bunk, first remove the passenger side cushion from the driver's side of the vehicle. Set this aside. Unlock the bunk by simply flipping the lock sideways. Slide the bunk forward and latch the bunk into the secondary latching position. Unfold your bunk cushions, slide them toward the front of the vehicle and insert the passenger side bunk cushion. Now your bunk is set up. After retrieving your ladder from the rear upper cabinet, Hold your ladder straight out from the bunk, slide the locking mechanisms into the receivers and let the ladder swing to the floor. Now your ladder is locked into place and you can climb up onto your bunk area. Always ensure that your bunk is locked in position, either the front position or the rear position while the vehicle is in motion. You can leave the bunk fully extended while the vehicle is in motion as long as it is locked into position. In some of your models, you will feature a low countertop just behind the passenger seat and the flip-up computer table located on the passenger side. This is a nice working surface when you swivel the passenger's front seat. To get to your water pump, you simply remove the cover panel and this will give you access to the water pump. On some of your Pursuit models, you may have the forward TV. This is the 32-inch Vizio TV. The operations are similar to those of the back TV. In the upper cabinet, you do have your inverter, your antenna booster, and you have the option to either have your TV plugged into the inverter. This will power your DVD player and your TV. The power switch is on the back side to operate off of the 12 volt power. You can also unplug from your inverter and plug your plugs into the wall socket located on the side cabinet behind the TV. You also feature antenna booster, which is located right next to the wall plug. This is if you are on air and want to have antenna operation. Your vehicle is equipped with swiveling passenger and driver seats. 
To swivel your passenger seat, place the seat in the center position on the slide track. Move the backrest into the full upright position and release using the handle on the side of the swivel base. You will swivel this seat with the backrest towards the outside of the vehicle. Once the seat is swiveled, you can adjust your backrest to the desired lean and slide your seat back into a comfortable position for the desired items you have set up in your vehicle. The driver's seat will also swivel. Once again, slide the driver's seat to the central location on the slide track you will find the release for the swivel on the driver's side door side of the seat. Simply release that, swivel the seat. This seat will only swivel 90 degrees or a little bit more because of the steering wheel position. The Ford dash is your standard Ford Econoline dash. Please refer to your Ford operating manual for your dash features and warning lights. Your vehicle also features a Clarion in-dash navigation backup camera GPS system. Simply turn on your Clarion radio. When you turn on your radio, you will notice its many features. You can add Sirius to this radio by adding the SW1 kit. You can also add your iPod in by simply connecting to the USB outlet here. To get to your backup camera, Simply hit your menu button, scroll across the bottom of the screen, and hit your camera. This camera can also be used as a rear view mirror. It is not tied into the reverse system of the vehicle, and you must set it manually. It can be on at all times while you're traveling down the road, or if you want to check what's behind you in your campsite. This is a touchscreen display. By simply touching your screen, you can move between channels, or you can choose whether you are on AM, FM, and other settings. And to get your GPS system, simply push the button that says Navi. Please follow your Clarion operating instructions for setting your GPS. Please do not set your GPS while you're driving. Your Ford vehicle is equipped with two fuse panels for the operation of the chassis of the vehicle. Your first fuse panel is located just behind the emergency brake pedal along the floor of the vehicle. Simply squeeze the tabs and remove the cover. The engine compartment fuse panel is just in front of your reservoir for your radiator. Simply pull the tabs back, lift to give you access to your Ford engine compartment fuse panel. Please refer to your Ford manual for fuse locations and the equipment that each fuse operates. This concludes the orientation portion of your video. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to show your 2014 pursuit. Please refer to your owner's manual and owner's manual package for additional information on the appliances and various operations in your vehicle.